What's going on, guys? Welcome to the waiver edition of uh, the Fair Shake Football Podcast, Josh. And yeah, week twelve. You always forget to say that, but oh, yeah. week twelve, week twelve waivers. waivers. That's right. Week yeah. twelve, week twelve. We're gonna be digging <laughs> deep. Yeah, this, this is week. not the greatest of waiver situations here. Yeah, it's uh, tough sledding on the waiver wire this week, but you know we've got a couple guys that you can uh, potentially pick up and e- stash, maybe even play, uh, depending on uh, matchups and uh, your teams. Depth and availability. Yep, we do. You want to start us off? Or I, uh, um, let, me just, let me just rattle them off here? Yeah, I mean, well, one guy that we can put on this list is Ty Johnson. I actually think Tevin Coleman is just as interesting. But, yeah, Ty Johnson slash Tevin Coleman, that's how I've got him here on mine. Uh, when my guy, Michael Carter, unfortunately got hurt, he's got a high ankle sprain. He'll be out for a few weeks. Um, unfortunately, again... But when he left, five carries went to Coleman, one went to Ty Johnson. So yeah. I don't know. Like, I mean, Ty's it's worth going to catch more passes, though. Yeah, it's worth imagine. taking maybe a flyer on both of them. Um, Coleman played thirty four percent of the snaps, five carries, one target. Um, Johnson kind of operated as the secondary back. But what, what was his snap percentage, Ty Johnson? Um, forty four, thirty four percent of the snaps as well. So. Um, See, I think that even split there on, on I the think percentages. that it'll be basically the same exact like Johnson's role will probably stay the same and then Coleman will just take over for Carter. That's what I think. Um except for maybe maybe he won't catch the same amount of passes Carter would have. And you know, I mean maybe it'll just be more of uh more receptions for Ty Johnson, which could make him definitely the more valuable guy. Definitely in PPR leagues. Yeah. I mean yeah, that 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 could definitely in most leagues are PPR, so I, I will agree with you there. But I think that you should also get Coleman because, it, as it seems now, Coleman is the one that nobody's going to really be talking about. So even if you spend a little bit of something on Ty Johnson, I think you can still grab Coleman probably for free right away and or for very low, uh, you know, a very little amount. I think that because I would hate to see Coleman go undrafted and then him be the – Jordan Howard, you know, are undrafted, un, unwavered <laughs> or mm-hmm. whatever, and then him be the Jordan Howard guy, and then we're talking about him next week like, damn it, we should have had him. So if you get one, get get the other. If you have the roster space, get the other one. Or if you're just desperate for running back and somebody grabs Ty Johnson, somebody outbids you, somebody uses the waiver ahead of you, then just grab Coleman and, as your kind of, um, you know, leftovers in free agency immediately following the yeah, waiver Yeah, I think period. they could both be a uh, potential flex play. <laughs> With Michael Carter yeah. being out. Yeah, that's that's definitely possible. I mean, the thing about the Jets is the offense isn't atrocious. You know, I mean, they got Elijah Moore, the wide receiver one, apparently, for the last three, four weeks or whatever it's been. And, um, you know, they've been – they haven't been abysmal. Like, they, the Texans offense, if I was talking about a Texans running back or receiver, which we actually have one to talk about later, um, I'm not going to – get as bullish on especially not one but two running backs and in the case of the Jets though we saw Michael Carter's been awesome all year if Michael Carter was a guy that just was seeing at least 10 touches every single week you know so if one of these guys gets that kind of a workload you know and especially if they catch a few passes as well um, it will be Again, a probably matchup based flex option, and at running at this time of year, running backs are crucial, especially because teams are going to start running the ball more, you know, as the weather gets colder, as we're already seeing, like with Philly. So, yep. Rex Burkhead, the next guy I want to talk about is I mentioned that Texans player, um, Rex Burkhead. The thing, is, and I don't think he's owned in any leagues so far, and um, I could one hundred percent guarantee that. Yeah. But the thing that's interesting to me is the Texans had their bye week in week 10, right? So they have bye week, and then what do they do in week in week 11? Rex Burkhead gets 18 rush attempts. I think he only had 40 yards with those eight. So he's yep. right around two yards a carry, which will probably happen some more moving forward if this is the kind of workload he gets because I don't really see Rex as just being a real dynamic guy. But <laughs> I definitely don't see him being a dynamic guy. But I, but I will say – if he gets the, if you any running back any running back gets that kind of volume in fantasy football, there's a chance they plunge it in from a yard out and get the you know get the touchdown. So like, I don't know if anybody's going to go in there and spend blow their wad on Rex Burkhead. So 
you could probably get him for nothing to super cheap. And, I mean, there's a chance that Houston's decided, hey, Rex is our guy. Yeah, I mean, he played in 44% <laughs> of the snaps. Obviously, they still have David Johnson, who played in 53% of the snaps, so a little more. But just but didn't touch the ball. Yeah, he, um, I don't know. Mean? It's, I mean, he had 13 carries and four targets, so I feel like. Oh, that's right. I, I feel like he's going to get more of the passing game usage out of them. Yeah, they really ran the um, hell out. But that's that was very favorable game flow for them to run the ball, like to have that many rush attempts. But I guess you're right. David Johnson, I forgot that he had 13 carries. But he had <laughs> 13 carries for 18 yards. So yeah. it wasn't like he was anything better than Rex, but he did lead the way. I just think that 18 carries has got to mean, you know, that he's in their plans somewhat, yeah. right? I mean... David Johnson is pretty much <clears throat> just not the old David Johnson right now. He no, he's old yes. David Johnson. Right. Yeah, unfortunately um, enough. But yeah, Rex Burkhead <laughs> could potentially be a sneaky little ad this week. Um uh but I mean there's not much more going on. Yeah. I uh, also for the Texans. Yeah. I also just while we're getting these sort of bottom ish teams, I think this one just popped in my head. I don't want to forget about it. Da- uh Duke Johnson. He's back. He's a Miami Dolphin now. He had a few carries in this in this game. What do you see? Four carries, um, eighteen yards. But I think that it's plausible. And here's my thing on him: it's plausible that no one picks him up in your league again. And it's also plausible that Miles Gaskin, a guy that's been averaging over twenty touches a game over the last month or so of the season, it's plausible that he either they want to take something off of his plate or that. He misses a game or two down the stretch. We've seen that before. Or, you know, that they want to get Duke. I believe they just brought Duke in, so maybe they just want to start slowly getting Duke more involved as they as he builds trust with the coaching staff because I think he would be an upgrade as a just pure pass catching back out of that backfield for Miami in a team that could be losing games, and that could be, you know, some extra pass work from, from a running back like Duke Johnson. So, I mean, again... Don't spend anything on him, but I think that he's a a plausible, uh, just at least someone to keep an eye on, be a week or two early on if you have the roster space or whatever, if you're in a deeper league, uh, maybe maybe snag him. Yeah. Who else you got? I got Traquan Smith is someone I'm actually kind of bullish on. I think that, and when I say bullish, I don't think that he'll be a wide receiver too. I think that he'll be, I think he's the lead dog in that Saints receiving core, and I think that'll stay that way the rest of the way. And here's why I'm bullish on him. So he's seen over the last two games, eight targets, seven targets, 91% of the snaps, 95% of the snaps. So he's trending up. He did have some production in this one, caught a touchdown pass as well, I believe. And he just, the 95% of the snap thing, now that we know there's no Michael Thomas coming back, there's no Odell Beckham Jr. signing there. Like, and we also... I don't. I don't want to say we know this, but it's plausible to me that New Orleans is going to continue to have positive game flow script for a receiver like Traquan Smith. You know where Simeon's throwing the ball forty times a game or whatever. So to me, I think Traquan Smith is a guy that that could be a legitimate matchup based flex guy moving forward. You know, I, I mean, he's always been a guy with talent. He just never really has been consistent. He's shown flashes, but I think that he's probably the most talented guy in that Saints receiving room, and he's also a guy that they're clearly, I'm going to use that word intent on, they intend on utilizing him, and that's more evident um, as of late than ever before. So I think Traquan Smith, just owned in 4% of leagues, I don't think you're going to have to spend a, a bunch on him. And again, I don't think you should, but I do think you should get him if you can, especially if you need some help at just, to, you know, guys that you can, trot out there for a flex option because you could have done that with him in each of the last two weeks and he would have turned something decent at least. Yeah. Um, I also like Jameson Crowder, 20% owned, caught six out of seven targets, 44 yards and a touchdown last week, but he, or this week, I mean, but he also was, tar- he's been targeted 28 times over the last four games, seven or more targets in three of the last four games. So it's been a consistent seven, you know, target thing. And I think we can all agree that the Jets will likely have some positive game script, uh, you know, in terms of the receiver position. So Jamison Crowder, someone that I think Elijah Moore, with him being way up here, we're not really talking about Jamison Crowder, but he's been a guy that's been successful. If you're in, especially getting 
points per reception. I mean, six for 44 and a touchdown. That's a good day at the office right there. It's like seven, almost 17 points. So that's good. And I think with the emergence of Elijah Moore, we always see this seesaw, right? The emergence of one guy and the defense is going to start treating him a certain way. Oh, don't forget, Jamison Crowder's still a good player. If he's not getting, if Elijah Moore's getting that extra attention, Jamison Crowder's a guy that could eat, you know, in terms of just being a little consistent weekly low end flex play. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I think he could be that guy. Um, another guy that um, <coughs> is on the list is Adam Troutman. This guy has 27 targets over his last four games uh, and five receptions in back to back games. He's injured, but I think it'll just be a short-term thing. Yeah. I mean, he's only owned in 7% of leagues. So, I mean, you can almost get him for almost nothing. Uh, Obviously, he's worth an ad deeper leagues, but definitely an option if you, you know, potentially have a guy on by. I like him because the injury almost cheapens him up. Like, no one's going to go out there and spend what they may have otherwise spent. They may have not spent anything on him anyways, but no one's going to go out there and spend anything crazy on him now because he's hurt. Yeah. You know, you can't start him next week. And that's usually what we look at, at with the tight end position. But if you, like many players in uh, all fantasy leagues, if you have a tight end position that you're not thrilled about, just grab him. You know what I mean? Because when he, if and when he comes back healthy, he could, not only could he be the, the best tight end there, mm-hmm. but he could be their leading receiver the rest of the way. I, really, yeah. I mean, especially if Kamara doesn't come back. Like, I think Troutman is... A dude that I liked coming out entering the draft that year, I think it was last year, and um, I didn't love him, but I liked him, and I thought that he was um, going to be a pretty good receiving, potentially receiving tight end, especially with in this Sean Payton offense. Sean Payton's got to have somebody emerge to be a guy we can throw passes to, and Troutman. Could, yeah, I mean he's you know, he's a good guy. he's a good matchup value. Yeah. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention a guy that I've been hard on because I said he was droppable, and that's Rondell Moore. I was very pleasantly surprised to see that after Rondell Moore's huge 11 catch at five yards a catch day, he's only owned in 23% of leagues. Now I know this isn't reflected on what he will be owned in after waivers process this week, but to me, with DeAndre Hopkins out. With Colt McCoy, it makes sense for McCoy to have some type of a trust level established with Moore because Moore's basically a backup, Colt's a backup, they practice together, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I think that we'll see more of this, especially if DeAndre Hopkins was is to linger like yeah. Kyler Murray is, is doing now. But, you know, I, I think that people are – I mean, a, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say his, his talent alone, you know, makes him a speculative ad, you know. Yeah. Stacked on top of their injuries. What would would you spend like the eighth waiver on him or something like that right now? Uh, yeah. W- what about the six? I mean, fifth? I paid thirty five dollars for I, it earlier this year. But, so, but like now, w- would you spend the fr- from this? Depending on my needs, if I need a receiver, um, yeah, he's definitely a yeah. guy. Obviously, I would favor like Elijah Moore or Darnell course, Mooney yeah. over him. But yeah, um, yeah. Uh, yeah potentially. Darnell Mooney, I was shocked to see he's only owned in 58% of leagues. That guy should be owned in one. He should yeah. have never not been owned. I don't think that 11 targets, you know, that kind of usage is no, going to happen every week. But, um, like I said, he's definitely a speculative ad um, this yeah. week as I, far as, I think you he's know. a little more than that. I think he's a, a guy that you probably, if you're going to get him, you got to do it now because otherwise, if he's still there next week and he has another big game, it's going to be, it, you're going to have to, Blow your wad on them. Yeah. And, and that's what I don't – I try to avoid that. That's why I almost never talk about guys that are the obvious ones because I don't like – and I haven't done it one time in any league all year. I don't like competing at that top price because they have to really – it has to be a situation where it's like a bona fide handcuff that's going to be guaranteed a workload and that is talented enough to pr- produce with such a workload. So – um, for me to blow my wad on a guy at, 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 on waivers. So, like, I try to be a week early. That way, if they don't pan out, I just cut them, no big deal, you know, whatever. So, I think that um, if you didn't get Cam Newton. Last call. Last call for sure because he, I plugged him in in two leagues. It, I think I picked him up either the day before or the day of in a league. And um, he worked out just fine for me. Gave me, I think, 26 or 28 points. He had three total touchdowns. And yeah, I mean, if you <coughs> if you need a streamer or even, you know, quarterback help, Cam Newton, like we said last call, this guy, uh, you know, came out with well, ferocious energy and, um, you know, 
played well. What twenty eight fantasy points? Yeah, he did his thing. Yeah, he, he did, did his thing for me. So I'm, I was happy to get him. I mean, he, he's only would you say fifty three percent owned? Fifty one percent. Fifty one percent owned. I mean, it's yeah. a lot, but I mean, if he's out there, you got to snag him. Yeah, if he's if he, there's a coin flip chance he's available in your league, so go ahead and grab him. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown is one that I'm interested in. So uh, we've been on this guy. He's been on our radar before, I should say. But, like, what what happened in yesterday's game is that he played the highest snap percentage of the season at 85%. Over the last two games, he's been targeted 10 times, and he's caught eight of them. So, And that was, remember, with some dude that had more interceptions than touchdowns in college playing quarterback, right, in one of those games. So... Um, and that was Jared Goff doesn't definitely wasn't his best game the previous week against the Steelers. So it's like um, I think that there's a chance that if Amon Ross St. Brown's going to get that 85 percent of the snaps moving forward or even higher, which I think is plausible. He was a guy that this regime drafted, you know, and a, to a very much wide receiver needy team. I think that it's definitely a possibility that uh, he's a decent Low end flex option moving forward, and it, and if guess what, if he goes out there and puts up a donut for you this week, and you know, don't start him if you get him this week unless you're desperate, but then you just dump him and move on, right? Like it, you're not going to spend much on these guys, but I think the ups there's upside there. There's a, like he could be the next Elijah Moore for all I know. You know what I mean? He really, he really could be. And if you add somebody like that for basically nothing, which is what I'm asking you to spend on him now, like a little bit, maybe a little bit more than nothing. But, you know, get him on your roster, and I think that you've got a chance to to have a decent flex option. I also like Kendrick Bourne. Not thrilled about it. I don't think he's going to have a ton of, like, boom weeks. But just as a guy to, to get in there, and if you're desperate, some of you guys sometimes w- with your questions, I can tell that you're in a spot where it's like, hey, I know this isn't great, but I need to choose between this guy and that guy. Sometimes in some of those questions, Kendrick Bourne would have been a better option and so I, you know, he's probably available. I don't think he's owned in more than fifteen, twenty percent of leagues. So, um, yeah. I mean, speaking of the Patriots, Mac Jones could be a little sneaky streamer this week. Yeah, that Titans defense is good, though. Yeah, but they've, you know, I think I they're mean, gonna run the ball like cra- uh, yeah. I they mean, just lost to the Texans, so yeah, but they're still good. They're they still are good. But, I mean, Mac Jones, you know. It wasn't the fault of their defense that they lost. The defense held him to, like, two yards of carry on the ground. Uh, Tyrod had, like, 100 yards passing. It was just you constantly put him on the field, you know, back on the right back on the field, right back on the field. They're going to give away some points that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise given up. But, I mean, they've. But I hear you, Mac might be decent. Yeah, they've given up the fourth most fancy points to the QB position this year. So, Definitely a streaming option uh, this think, week. And like we said, the Patriots are 74. They're playing really well right now. They're clicking on all cylinders. Uh, Mac Jones is getting better and better every week. Uh, so definitely a little, uh, a, you know, a good streaming option, I think, this week for uh, week 12. Yeah. And uh, two other guys that I kind of like um, are DeAndre Carter. I don't love him. Okay, I know it's I know it's not glamorous here. And, again, please don't use anything up on this guy. This guy's got to be a free agent pickup. But with Curtis Samuel potentially not coming back this year at all, the groin injury, I guess, is just kind of like not – it's just not getting better. Um, from what I understand, and that's a possibility. I mean, this guy could be the, the number two receiver in Washington on a team that looks like its offense is improving quite a bit. No Logan Thomas there, so he might be the legit number two pass catcher in that offense. And I think that – Terry McLaurin, remember with that seesaw effect, may not be the same with DeAndre Carter because I don't know if he's the bona fide two. Maybe Daomi Brown be would be who you think that is. I don't know if he's been uh, – I'm not sure if <clears throat> who's that who that guy is right now, but it will appear to be DeAndre Carter. Um, and just someone to, to keep an eye on maybe. Maybe even right now would be a week early, a week early. But here's the thing. If DeAndre Carter would have been – if Heineke would have had to throw more, right? Then it becomes, does Carter have a four for 70 in one game? Because if that game happens, now we have to, if that game happens this week, now we're going to have to compete at a price that I'm probably uncomfortable competing at for his services. So I would, you know, if you're desperate, get him on your roster. And then if you're desperate, MVS, man. Yep. MVS is only on a 9% of leagues. 10 targets last week out of nowhere. He caught four of them 
So that's not very efficient, but those four went for 123 yards and a touchdown. So, you know, obviously he had the 70 yarder, but that's still another 50 yards or whatever with um, on his other three catches. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's you, still you can decent. take a shot on him and see if the volume continues. I mean, 10 targets is volume. Yeah, insane. So. And he caught a 41 yard pass the week before. So mm-hmm. it's like he's always kind of been that dude, like not a super high volume guy, but um, he might just do what he did and go. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's always he's always a threat to catch yeah, a long. I think he averaged so. like twenty yards a catch last year on the season. So he's a dude that that has that kind of um. That's yes. what he that's what he offers you. So like, if you just want to say fuck it, my I like the floor of my roster this week. I'm um, I just need a boom bust guy to you know because I need somebody to fill in. I don't, he's not a terrible option. Yeah, you know. Um. <laughs> You got anyone else? I think that's all I got, man. Yeah, I mean, like we said, starting this episode out, we're digging deep with <laughs> 12 waivers, man. There's just not much out there. But like we said, we've uh, we've highlighted a few guys that we think that could potentially uh, help your team out, you know, or even, you know, stash um, for the long haul. Fantasy season, you know, it's, it's coming, coming to a close. You know, there's only six weeks left, <coughs> including the playoffs, so... It's getting tight, but, um, yeah, that wraps it up here. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, um, comment if you need any, uh, you know, advice on who you should pick up on waivers this week and who you think you might be uh, targeting on waivers. And, um, yeah, we will um, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace, guys. Peace.